We'll move on then to some potential exits before the transfer deadline does come about. Um, and the big one here, of course, is Nat Phillips. Um, you mentioned him a second ago. We actually brought back Reese Williams from a loan from Blackpool. I think that's to facilitate the exit of Nat Phillips, potentially. I think yesterday, Galatasaray were the most interested club. Um, how do you see that situation? And also, Ian, do you think it's the right thing that you moved on? And what kind of fee could Liverpool be looking to recoup on him? For, for Liverpool, the best thing for Nat Phillips would be to stay there and stay there forever because he's a very good fifth choice centre back. But obviously, yeah. that's not fair on him. So I think what is he twenty five now? Possibly yeah. twenty six. Think he's twenty five. Yeah. So, so he <clears throat> he needs to go and play first team football. He's probably played more. He certainly played more for Liverpool than he possibly ever could have thought, say three years ago. Mm-hmm. Totally. I think he was on loan at Stuttgart then, wasn't he, for the second yeah. half of the of that season and uh, in fact, the whole season actually. Which at the time we thought, well, that's a bit of a strange move, but it's kind of he- it's helped him get to, to to where he is today. And and it's people in Europe have seen him play in a different league, so he's actually quite a, a valuable commodity in that sense. But mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, Reese Williams was brought back to cover for the fact that you know uh, Phillips could go, and I think Liverpool are still expecting it, but they've been expecting this. <laughs> I think that's four or five transfer windows. It just yeah. for whatever reason it hasn't happened. Obviously, last year he spent the second half on loan at Bournemouth, helped them get promoted. Yeah. So he's got all these strings to his bow. He'll get a lot of interest. I think Liverpool, in terms of actually leaving Liverpool, he signed a contract eighteen months ago, so he's still in terms of his transfer value is quite high, or the yeah. high, as high it could possibly be. Um, so no one's going to be nicking him on the cheap. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it will ultimately come down to Nat Phillips and what he wants to do. I think he's. He's earned that from uh, what he's done for the club, and he's been so patient this year. He's only started a couple of games, mm-hmm. and you know. And what's one of the, I know it's been not a very good season for Liverpool, but one of the highlights has been his tackle on Haaland in yeah. the Carabao Cup game. So yeah. you know, he's kind of like fans love that kind of stuff. So when he does go, I think they'll go with the best wishes of uh, of everybody who supports Liverpool, and certainly everybody at the club. Yeah, 100%. We'll always remember that close turn in the San Siro. Yeah. Well, yeah. It says a lot about it. It's pretty damning on Liverpool season that one of the highlights is that tackle, but unfortunately, you're absolutely spot on. Um, yeah, he actually came back from that loan, I remember, to play in that derby when Curtis Jones scored the win. He actually came back just like a week, played in that, yeah. and then went back to Stuttgart. Um, but yeah, I think you're right. I think he's done really well, considering I don't think anyone, including himself, probably thought he's going to have any sort of Liverpool career. And he's actually turned himself into a cult hero, actually, in many respects. Um, just quickly, Ian, before we move on from Exit, Anyone else you might see? We've recalled a lot of youngsters in the last few weeks. Do you think there could be quite a few more heading back out on different loans before the window shuts? It's an interesting one. I was speaking yesterday when we were at the game at Brighton about this. And if you look at it, seven youngsters have come back and you think, well, that's a bit of a concern. But mm. a lot of them are just totally for totally different reasons. Like Balagese, for example, is injured. Right. Uh, Reese Williams, we mentioned, is covering for yeah. Nat Phillips or potentially covering for him. Uh, mm. Someone like Max Waltman's not been playing enough games. Uh, and Bobby Cometti, uh, Bobby Billy Cometti are the same. Um, so I would, to be fair, I would be surprised if any of those go, go out on loan again. The only thing that might happen is if they decide someone like, because they're at the FA Cup now, they decide someone like Bobby Clark or Ben Doak and they go, right, yeah, you get yourself a bit more senior experience, go off to this particular club. And for those two, I'd be, I'd be looking at top half of the championship because I think both of them are very good and I think they're going to have a part to play for Liverpool in the senior team for quite a few years to come. We've seen what's happened with Baj Ketic uh, this year. Once you get in and you do well, Klopp's the kind of player who, uh, manager, sorry, who showed with all the way back with Trent Alexander-Arnold that if you get in and you're good enough, you're staying in. Yeah, I, I completely agree with that. And I think certainly someone like Doak and Clark to a lesser extent says you've seen a little bit of Clark and he has impressed, but Ben Doak, he is somebody who's crying out. He's just sort of plug and play, ready to go for first team football. And I think a championship loan, if he was to get one, would be a wonderful move for him because like you say, out of both domestic cups now, we're not likely to see a lot of him. It'd be minutes here and there. He's not going to start. You wouldn't imagine a single game. Um, so, yeah, I think a loan for him would actually be a really smart move. Similar to when we sent Harvey Elliott to Blackburn as well, of course. That would be reminiscent of that. Um, we'll come on to the summer then, in terms of what Liverpool could do. We've already kind of touched upon... Um, potentially saving money, sort of one eye on the bigger targets and the bigger fish further down the line. Now, the obvious big target when it comes to that, we haven't actually mentioned his name. It's the longest I've been in any podcast or show for well, a long time. Can, can I just carry on going? We don't, see if we can get through the entire thing without mentioning I've got to say Let's it. See if we can do it. I'm sorry, I've got to <laughs> that, say it. Um, that, that, do you mean Dortmund's England international? That there last, you go. yeah. That's I, think him, yeah quite, him. I think he's quite young, yeah. Um, yeah. He's the number one target, isn't he? Let's not beat around the bush. He has to be the number one target. Um on all eggs in that particular basket, would you say, when it came to Liverpool's recruitment? 
No, because that would be faintly ridiculous, let's be honest. I don't think the regs go in. I mean, okay, I say that, but they did that with Virgil van Dijk, didn't they? They So, But the difference there is that they knew that he wants to come. So unless they know something that we don't, Mm -hmm. which is which is quite obvious, which quite likely to be fair, because they've kept the cards very close to the chest with certain transfers over the last eighteen months. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, I think though they will be obviously looking at other midfielders other than the England international, whose name we're not going to mention. Um, I think it's it's clear it's been clear for eighteen months. I mean, we were writing the story last year that you know he's the main target. Mm -hmm. It was a matter of when. Uh, We knew he wasn't going to go. Last summer, because Dortmund sold Haaland, they didn't want to let go of two players. We knew he probably wasn't going to go after the World Cup because it's in the January, and why on earth would Dortmund want to do that? Um, so the only fly in the omens, as it were, was the fact that Liverpool have gone unbelievably bad over the mm-hmm. past couple of months. So I don't think anybody foresaw that. So I think that's the, that's the only thing. is, But if he's already been persuaded to come, and Liverpool have obviously got a very good relationship with Dortmund, Historically and even before, you know, even before Klopp uh, arrived at the club, um, they'd have to be the front runners. But you know, there's still, as I say, there's still another six months before any of this, and quite a lot can happen in that time. So they will obviously have them as a priority. Will they have all their eggs in that basket? From a financial point of view, they'll have believe that they're looking to box it off. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't necessarily mean that they're not looking at other stuff. So. In one case, the answer to your question is yes, and then put in another case, no. I think it'd be wise if that was the case in terms of not going all in for Bellingham and just completely taking your eye off the ball elsewhere. Because if you do go all in for somebody and he decides Real Madrid, Manchester City, for instance, all of a sudden we've got a problem. Um, and I think we've been half guilty of that previously. There's a lot of sort of too many talk, wasn't there, last summer as well, which kind of. We well, they, did, they, did, they did want him, didn't they? They wanted yeah. him when they said he was the player that they decided upon. And they knew that we were in a battle with Real Madrid, and then it obviously became clear that he wanted to go to Real Madrid. Yeah. And that's why then, I mean, th- that's a fact. My guess after that is that they then looked at the squad and went, well, had we signed him, we would have been actively looking to move on Oxley Chamberlain or Keita. Mm-hmm. Then they went, well, we'll keep them. Yeah. And then obviously Oxley Chamberlain was the other one he got injured, as well as Curtis Jones. But that's mm-hmm. why Arthur came, so they lost three straight away. So mm-hmm. that's why that happened. But you know, I don't think they... While you know that Ox and Cater have had injury problems in the past, I don't think they would have expected them both to go down almost immediately and be out for the first half of the season. So yeah. I think a lot of things went against them there. Hey, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you want to watch the entire conversation between myself and Ian Doyle, where we discuss the future of all the Liverpool players out of contract, as well as Kaveen Kelleher, plus whether Liverpool will make a move for Matthias Nunes or Moises Casado, head over to Redmen Plus, sign up as a club captain, monthly subscriber, and use the code TRANSFER, and you will get a free month. Go and do it.